Hi guys, uh, my name is uh, Wojtek Trotsky. Uh, I'm a um, principal software engineer at Red Hat. Um, and today I'm going to talk about the GraphQL CLI, uh, which is the command line tool you can use for your uh, various needs uh, when you're building uh, GraphQL applications. So GraphQL, we all know it, uh, but it comes with the price of having so many libraries, A, and they update faster than sandwiches, right? So there is this de decision of, okay, what kind of framework I will use, what kind of library, and so on. And GraphQL itself, by definition, is also filled by boilerplate. So you need to generate those documents for the client side, you need to have resolvers, schema, all that that takes your mental capacity, takes you out of your business knowledge, and as you know, we've seen in pre uh, previous talks, like sometimes you need to de-risk in, in your team. You need to have this evaluation phase, and we found that that this takes a lot of time. Um, and then with the GraphQL, it's also changing the way you building the software uh, from the ground up. So, for example, if you're building the REST application, you can just build with with any framework that allows you to use, um, you know, make a call to the database. But the GraphQL uh, has this execution layer where it executes a graph and collects the results. So you need to think about your application in a GraphQL way. So how best explore the GraphQL? You can just rely on examples. Um, you can use the tools like GraphQL CLI uh, or frameworks. Like all of those could be joined together. Um, the fact is that with examples, uh, this is classical chicken on egg problem. So if you like want to learn GraphQL, want to, to risk it, you will look for something simple. But then it could be updated, may not be the actual business logic you want, it's not your case, and so on. So you're kind of going on a journey to explore the GraphQL land, and it takes a while, it takes a serious amount of time, and your team needs to get this knowledge, right? And then it comes the GraphQL CLI which is the approach of using the tooling. So instead of framework, you have a set of command line tools that help you to do the code generation. If some of you know there's a, a GraphQL code generator library, it's being used in GraphQL CLI as well. So GraphQL CLI is being maintained by a GraphQL community. So there's no company behind that. And there's also a place for you because the GraphQL CLI, it's extendable. So you can build your own workflows, you can add your own templates and starting points. And the main approach for GraphQL CLI is to start with source code generation, right? So we're generating the source code, we're generating type safe resolvers, uh, we're generating database schemas, uh, client side queries. If you ever work with Prisma, AWS AppSync, that's, that's the same approach, but this time you're taking the control and you, what you're getting is a code. So when you think about it, you always need to start with your business logic, right? So you're starting with some kind of graphical typing, like types, you're passing them in as an input, and then you pick in your own stack. So your own stack could be, let's say, Apollo application, right, with subscriptions. You get all that in kind of production-ready fashion, and you can publish it, basing, a basic crew, in just two minutes, and have it running on Kubernetes. So this is how uh, graph, uh, how you explore the GraphQL CLI. So you just install it and there's a command which is GraphQL in it. Um, it asks you a couple questions, mainly what kind of technology you want, uh, do you want to generate the client side, server side, uh, that kind of stuff. And this, normally I have like longer presentation where I show the demo, but today I just have this extra code. So uh, you just start with the model, which is your business logic, right? And what you're getting is instantly you're getting all possible queries you can work with, right? So you have the finding, um, crude, and so on. Then on the server side, it gives you resolvers that are production ready, data loader, that kind of stuff. You're getting schema that's generated from you. It has documentation. Uh, we follow the best patterns. Uh, we're using the proven libraries for schema stitching and so on. It gives you fully type experience text, uh, thanks to graph GraphQL code gen, and there's also DB types. So application works nicely, it's quite fast to develop, and what you're focusing on is your business logic. Uh, but you're asking probably where the data comes from, right? So data com can come from REST, right? We have abstraction of the data sources, but you can pick whatever uh, database, and thanks to GraphBag, um, 
you will be able to connect to the database and automatically create those uh, schemas, right? So you, you have a graphical schema, but you will need to also create a table uh, in a database. So thanks to that, you can have like migrations that give you like iterative mode, so you can send it to your DBA. Uh, it, it helps you to kind of build the application in a very iterative way. Sorry. Okay. Oh, Jesus, this is amazing. Also. Okay, so, yeah, and many times I'm, I'm doing this and people are asking, okay, but we already have an app, right? This, we, we try it, so how we kind of handle it? Uh, there are many different patterns, but mainly uh, the GraphQL CLI will allow you to work with uh, open API, so you can, if you have an existing server, you can just generate open API spec, and from open API, you can have a GraphQL, or we can even scan your database. So many different libraries are being used under the hood for it. Um, and there's also support for extensions, so any GraphQL command can be joined. So you can build your own commands for your own needs. If you, uh, you want to, you know, generate something extra, you want to build with, let's say, Mongo, you can extend the GraphQL CLI uh, for your own needs, but still benefit with existing core commands. Ah, that's it. Uh, Thank you very much, guys.